Welcome to this instructor's notes video following up on the compositing a coffee scene exercise, where the goal here is to offer additional guidance for accomplishing the exercise. So if you haven't tried the exercise yet, I encourage you to stop watching this video and attempt it on your own first. Then come back to watch this if you need help. Otherwise, the whole point of the exercise being a challenge is kind of lost. Having said that, let's get to work. Here in Blender, I have the same Blend file open that is available for you to download, where we have a few nodes in the compositor already set up for us, an image node that is sourcing an open EXR file containing several render passes. And so the first thing we have to do in this composition is reconstruct the render from some of these passes, most notably the um, diffuse direct, diffuse indirect, diffuse color, and then glossy direct, glossy indirect, and glossy color. Now in the uh, exercise description, here in the instructions, I recommended you to follow this guide for reconstructing the render passes. And if we click on that, um, it is a link to the Blender manual where we have the formula diagram for reconstruction. So the formula goes uh, direct plus indirect. So that's an addition operation. And then you multiply that by the diffuse color. And that will complete the diffuse pass here in red, which then you add to everything else, the glossy and the transmission or the emission and environment, if you have them, to give you your final combined render. And so let's quickly set that up. Um, I'm going to need, in the Shift A Add menu, I'm gonna need Color Mix. And uh, when I do that, you can see the background refreshes because I have Backdrop enabled and um, our combined output is going to the viewer. Now, I know that you could just use the combined output to finish your composition and give it some treatment, but that's not the point of the exercise. Remember, this is in the Fundamentals of Compositing course where it's important to understand how to reconstruct a render into its different elements. So um, you are discouraged from using the combined pass. And so what we're gonna do is take the diffuse direct pass and we're going to put it in slot number one of this mix node, then take the diffuse indirect, plug it into slot number two, and remember this is an addition operation. And next we'll duplicate the add node that we have, we'll change the operation to multiply, and we're going to take the result of the uh, previous addition and multiply it by the diffuse color. And now if I shift control click on this node, that will plug it up into the viewer and this is our completed diffuse pass. But right now our render looks pretty weird because there's no reflections. And that's what our glossy passes will give us. And so it's the same formula. That means I can just take these two nodes, shift D to duplicate them, and then plug up direct and indirect into the first addition node, and then the glossy color into the uh, multiply. And then we're going to duplicate the addition and add these two finished passes together, diffuse and glossy. Now we have a completed combined render. If I shift control click on the node up here, or rather than shift control clicking, let me just take the combined output, which is going into this reroute node, plug it into the viewer, and you can see there's no change whatsoever. So we have successfully reconstructed our render from the different passes. And uh, we have several other passes available to us, which I wanted to make available in case you wanted to use them. For example, we have a depth pass, which uh, if we look at the Z depth buffer, let's see, maybe I can look at that in the um, viewer node, the UV image editor, and no, not really. But anyway, um, what the depth pass offers, if you remember, is a Z depth information. So if you wanted to put some depth of field in here, you can. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? A shadow pass for tweaking the shadow, specifically ambient occlusion, if you wanted to include that, which uh, helps to emphasize contact shadows. Let's just go ahead and put that in there very quickly um, as a color mix node. And it would be either a multiply, or honestly, I like to use ambient occlusion. If I ever do use it, I like to use it for as a uh, overlay operation. If we look at that now, turning it on and off with the M mute hotkey, you can see that uh, everywhere where there's contact shadows, things get a lot darker. And so I like overlay personally, um, maybe tone that way down by like half, and that's okay. It, um, maybe it helps. I think ambient occlusion actually takes away from realism, especially when it's isolated by itself away from global illumination. So I'm going to control X to remove that node, just uh, I'm personally not gonna use ambient occlusion. 
Um, what else do we have? Here we have the normal output, um, a mist pass, in case you wanted to put some sort of fog in here, and uh, an environment and uh, index material pass. And so all the passes I just went through, uh, we wanted to make available to you in case you wanted to use them for adjusting your composition. And a, a very important one is the index MA. So let's just run through how to use this one real quick. We need a node in the converter menu ID mask. And if we take that index MA, plug it into the ID mask, we can now shuffle through the different indices and you can see that the white color identifies certain areas of our render, certain objects in our scene. So this index pass one is all of your coffee beans. Index pass two is the background. Index pass three is the uh, burlap sack that's holding the coffee beans. And then we can also isolate the uh, coffee liquid itself, the coffee cup. So these are organized so that you can manipulate certain things. So as an example, um, let's see how we can use the ID mask to adjust the diffuse color of our coffee cup here. All right, so I'm going to space out some of these nodes because the place to insert this would be the actual uh, diffuse color input right here. So if we take a color and let's use, let's say RGB curves and plug it in right there. So we have the diffuse color going into the RGB curves. We can use the ID mask as a, uh, let's see, ID mask as the factor right here. And now if we control click, I'm sorry, shift control click, now we can change the color of this white cup. Now, since it is white, I need to probably bring down my RGB values to make it more of a gray. That way we have some values to work with. In changing the color, you can see it's already shifted a little bit. So if we increase the green, you can see that it's now changing only the coffee cup. And yeah, as I take this um, light extreme of our graph here, on, uh, in the color tab, I need to lower that in order to get color values that we can manipulate. So if we continue to pump up that green color, maybe even take the high range back up, now you can see that we have a definitive green that's coloring the diffuse pass of our coffee cup. And then if we look at the combined render, now we have a green coffee cup. So that's an example of how you can use the ID mask to adjust certain parts of your render. Now, um, since we have a pretty organized node network currently, or rather that we're at the beginning of our composition, it would be a good idea to inject some organization at this point. So I'm going to select all of my reconstruction nodes and hit Shift P, um, which actually didn't work because I need to enable the Node Wrangler add-on. So if we open up our Blender user preferences in the add-ons panel, search for Wrangler, and you can see it pop up Node Wrangler. I highly encourage you to leave this on by default because it offers a lot of good tools in our compositor here. And the one I wanted to use was Shift P, which puts a frame node around the selected nodes. And here we can name, let's call this reconstruction in the node name and just copy that to the label. So now it will show up right over here in our frame node. We can make the color something less drab than gray. And there we go. So now we can move all these and visually they're organized as well. Uh, the ID mask didn't really belong there. And so from here, um, we've got it more organized and we're ready to start working on some treatment. Now, one of the criteria that I included for passing the exercise is to add a texture of smoke or rather steam to come off of the coffee cup. Um, if we were to create that in Blender in 3D, that would have been a fluid smoke simulation, which would have been a lot more effort than simply grabbing an image and compositing it over top. So if I jump over to my finder window, um, in the source files under textures, I've given you two options, smoke one and smoke two. Now I'm gonna use Smoke 1 for this example and simply drag it over to the uh, Blender compositing window, let go, and that will automatically create an image node, which we can now um, mix into our composition. Let's use an add node here, duplicate it, and then Alt-P to uh, clear it out of that frame node. And so we'll take our image of smoke and plug it into the second image slot. Now you can see that it is composited over top, but it's not the right scale or location. So 
In order to achieve that, let's go to the Distort Node menu and choose Transform right here. So this gives you basic um, X and Y translational coordinates, as well as an angle of rotation and a scale value. For our scale, let's take that down to like, how about 0.2? That seems to be pretty appropriate. And then slowly um, drag the X and Y sliders until it um, lines up with the coffee cup. There we go, I think that that looks pretty good. But um, a problem that we have is the image is square and you can see the border of the image. Um, the square where our texture is a little bit lighter than the background. So I need to adjust essentially my levels of this image. Let's go to the color menu and add an RGB curves. And using the C tab here, let's drag down the dark values a bit. As I drag that flag down, we can slowly start to get rid of the edge. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. But the saturation of our image now has been increased. So there's a distinct color to the smoke. And I don't really want that. This is supposed to represent steam, which isn't going to have much of a color. So let's uh, fix that with a hue, saturation, and value node. Simply plugging that in after RGB curves. Taking the saturation, let's try 0.5. And yeah, that takes it away pretty good. Now for the addition operation here, where we mix it in with our uh, reconstructed render, let's take the factor down to like 0.1, or maybe 0.2, give it a little bit more. Yeah, I think that looks good. However, I might need to move the image up a little bit more. It seems to be uh, crossing over the edge of the coffee cup rather than um, seemingly coming from the uh, coffee itself. So let's take that um, Y, coordinate and bump that up a little bit more. There we go. Now it looks like it's coming directly out of the coffee. Okay, that's looking pretty good. A nice addition, I think, to the realism and uh, also maybe the appetizing appeal of this render. Though I don't think I love the green coffee cup. Maybe red would be a little more appropriate. Let's go back to the RGB curves and uh, let's get rid of the change I made to the green channel. Let's see here, um, drag up the blue, and what's happening with the red? Okay, so really I need the red up, and then the green and the blue, let's take those down. Yeah, I think red's going to be a little bit nicer, though uh, maybe take the green and blue down even further. There we go, nice rich red. Yeah, I think that looks a little better. Very cool. Uh, a big bonus of the compositing workflow is when I want to make spur of the moment decisions just like that. I don't have to change the shader and re-render. It's very simple just to go back in my node network and make changes there. Okay, so the only thing left that I have to do with treatment or that I want to do with treatment is to add a vignette and then a little bit of color correction. So a vignette I like to make out of a matte ellipse mask node. And if we shift control click on that, you can see that it's just a white and black channel where we can adjust the width and height of our circular ellipse mask. And what I'm just trying to do is basically darken the corners in this circular pattern. And um, after the ellipse mask, once I have that kind of shaped correctly, let's go to filter blur and change the operation to fast Gaussian and then the X and Y values, let's try 300 in X and Y. And so um, we can see a little bit of darkening on the corners, but it's mostly white. So I think that I should decrease the um, width and height a little bit of the ellipse mask. There we go. Now we have a more darker corners. And so with this mask now set up, I can use this with a color mix node to overlay over top of uh, the previous composition. So shift control click on the mix and uh, change the operation to overlay. And uh, if we turn that on and off with the M hotkey, you can see what that's doing, um, mainly darkening the edges and keeping the center light, which is an artistic method of drawing attention either to the center of the image or a particular spot uh, on the image. So if I wanted to draw attention to the coffee cup, um, unmute that node, then I would move the X position over a little bit. Well, not that far. Just like that. So now there's less attention on the left side of the image where it's darker 
and more attention directly on the coffee cup. Now, the vignette, I personally don't like it to be too strong like this, so we definitely want to tone that back. Let's try 0.5 and then turn that on and off. It should be a more subtle effect rather than overt. And yeah, I think this looks a little bit better. And so that is a vignette. And then finally, some color correction. Let's put that uh, after our vignette here. I'm gonna do that with a color, color balance node. Okay, we'll plug that in right there after our vignette overlay. And here it really comes down to an artistic taste. I'm going to take the lift value and go a little bit into the blue, not that much, just a little into the blue. And then for my gamma, a little into the orangish red, kind of warm up the image again. And then for the gain, let's try and increase that here towards the white spectrum, maybe a little bit in uh, the middle gamma as well. And just tweak around these values. You can see that they're fairly sensitive. There we go, I think that that's kind of cool. It's maybe a little bit too contrasty. So as I try to brighten up the lift a little bit, there we go. Although um, it does sort of seem like our vignette isn't having much effect anymore. No, it is still there. It's just maybe a touch too subtle. Let's see here. I think what I will do is maybe increase the width and height to try and get the blur to be a little more concentrated on the corners. Yeah, like that. And now let's see, uh, maybe increase the overlay. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay, so yeah, this is an example of uh, maybe a finished composition. Remember, when it comes to the treatment, it's very much up to the artistic taste of the person making the composition. And so I hope this has shed a little more light on uh, how to accomplish this exercise. The only step left now is to go to my UV image editor where I'm looking at the viewer image node and image save as image and call it whatever you like. I'm gonna call it final comp PNG. Uh, there is no alpha, so RGB, color depth of 8, compression at 90% is fine. And now we have saved that to an image file. And that is all for these instructor notes. Thank you for watching.